The name Crossbreed Holsters, pretty simple. Obviously, we have a hybrid product, okay? It's a combination of leather and Kydex. I did, and I thought of a lot of everything. I thought, well, there's, there's hybrid holsters, and there's this, and there's that. And I thought of stuff that wasn't even related to the product. But I've always felt that if you're going to have a company, a company name should reflect what you do. You know, that's, that's just common sense. If people don't understand what your company is about just by the name, then they're not going to get it. They're not going to seek that information. They want to know it right up front. So obviously we had to have something about holsters and a, and a hybrid product. And I didn't like the word hybrid because it doesn't sound good to me. So I'm like, well, it's a crossbreed. And then I'm like, well, there's kind of more to that. And I actually ended up designing our entire logo around it. And obviously crossbreed has two meanings. Uh, partially a hybrid product or a crossbreed of leather and kydex. And honestly, given some reference to, you know, the Lord and his sacrifice on the cross for all of this. When you pull your holster out of your package, what I want you to feel is quality. And that's what we deliver. The first thing, the moment you touch it, I want you to understand that that was made for you. We don't make 600 Glock holsters and put them on a shelf. When, when an order comes in, it goes into the queue. And then when we get to it, that order goes to the first step in the line. And they do that part. And then the next step and the next step. And when you get it, it'll actually have some personalized information on the back of it that demonstrates, not, not necessarily to demonstrate to you that we made it, but as part of our tracking system. But we get a lot of feedback like that, that that's really obvious we made it for that person. Um, the other thing, obviously, is once you've been wearing it for a while, I want you to understand that concealed carry doesn't have to be uncomfortable, that you can be comfortable and carry concealed. Mark Craighead is quite literally just a regular guy. Matter of fact, uh, you're familiar with Millspec Monkey and his patches, right? Yes, sir. My favorite Millspec Monkey patch is Regular Guy, and that's what I run. Born in 69, okay. the year of the last model of the first generation Camaro, and born in uh, Arvada, Colorado, Colorado native. Moved to the Ozarks in 76. Uh, went through most of my high school years there. Spent a few years in the Air Force when I got out of high school. Went back to the Ozarks. Met my current wife, who's been putting up with me for about 22 years. Uh, various odd jobs here and there, late 30s, went to nursing school, uh, got my RN, but at the same time I started Crossbreed Holsters, so by the time I had actually completed nursing school, Crossbreed Holsters was up and running. I did about six months as a cardiac RN, and then had to make the switch to run Crossbreed Holsters full-time, and the rest of that's pretty much history that everybody knows. Uh, I, am, I am a huge gearhead, as is my middle daughter, Carly. Um, have, have several different rides, and am a very, very large car enthusiast. Uh, shooting a car. My favorite in the current stable is probably the 2011 CTS V, which has had a little trip to Lingenfelter for some massage work and is putting out an undisclosed amount of horsepower, but uh, it'll scoot pretty good. And my wife likes it because if you drive it normal, it drives normal. But you open it up and uh, better hang on. My dad is a retired police officer, and one of my earliest memories was being 12 years old and him teaching me how to control a, a four inch Highway Patrolman 357 mag with uh, full house loads and keep them all on target, you know, in a relatively quick manner of, of discharging those rounds. So have always, you know, lived ever since he moved us to Missouri in the woods, out on the farm, running around with a 22 or whatever, and just been shooting since really I can remember. The best memory, especially in the later years, is he was a detective and gone a lot. And, and as an officer yourself, you know that sometimes when you walk out that door, you don't know when you're going to come home. You, you know, you've got to work the case, you got to do whatever's going on. You might be home at the end of your shift, or you might be gone for two or three days, depending on what's happening. And, uh, and he was a homicide detective in the later years, which was when my memories were crisper. And the best memory was always, his, was always him coming home, you know. Um, the other one was uh, getting, a ride, getting a ride to school in, a, I believe it was a 74 Nova, brown, unmarked car, and that was just the coolest thing in the world was Dad taking me to school in the cop car. More as a nurse, my cooler experiences are the ones that I felt more uh, stimulating or gra gravitated more towards was in clinicals in the ER. Uh, very, very stereotypical male RN. I fit the profile exactly. Not a real nurturing individual, really, and, and it's just true. I spent, I spent the six months as a cardiac nurse on the floor, you know, taking care of the same patient for several days or whatever. But uh, the real rush was the ER, you know. Bring them in, keep them from dying, fix them up, send them to surgery. I made myself a promise when I went to nursing school because it, it was a life change. And when I started it, I had zero intention. I didn't even know about crossbreed holsters yet. It wasn't, it wasn't a thought. Um, and that's a whole different story. But it, it, and, that, and it's a different backstory. But nursing school was an absolute life-changing direction for me. 
and, and I promised myself when I started nursing school that I didn't care what happened, whether I won the lottery or whatever, and that's kind of what happened with Crossbreed, is I would not quit. I was going to get through school, and I was going to work as an RN no matter what. I wouldn't quite say I'm a training junkie. I don't think that's fair. Um, but uh, when I have the opportunity to, opportunity to do some or work with someone that's known in the field, uh, yeah, I certainly try and expand my knowledge. Part of that's the, with crossbreed holsters. I want to be proficient at, at firearms uh, at a higher level than just the average person because that really relates back to what we do. You know, it's, there's a lot going on, especially with concealed carry, drawn, and things like that. So it all just makes me a better manager of my company. I still find it odd that, like, I introduce myself for something, and people are, are glad to meet me. I'm like, I, I don't look at myself like we were talking about. I'm just a regular guy, you know. But, you know, so, oh, you're the crossbreed guy. Oh, you start crossbreed holsters. And it just, like your reaction, I'm just like, I put my britches on one leg at a time. And I have bad days. And I got sick the other day. And I choked and had two train wrecks on the range. So I'm just a regular guy. So I, I, it, it, I, still, I still find the whole crossbreed deal and the Mark Craighead thing um, a little... Uncomfortable is not the right word, but a, a little foreign to me from, from my perspective looking out at the world. Everything, everything from law enforcement and military, obviously there's a close relationship there with our product line. Um, on the personal side, um, there's a lot of stuff we do, we being my wife and I, um, not, to, not to shine a spotlight on anything, but, uh, but we, we, definitely, we definitely feel that we're more of a channel than a stopping point for the financial blessing that flows through our lives. Not, not, that, not that we're not thrilled with what happens and not that, you know, we don't have some cool stuff and, and a nice house, but, but I see a lot of people say one thing and do another. We try to walk the walk. Um, very early on, when, when, the, when Crossbreed really started to become something large, um, we had a conversation. And my wife and I sometimes don't see eye to eye. And we had a very adult conversation and said, okay, she kind of, I don't know if she wants to say she volunteered or we just came to the agreement that she was not going to be directly involved in crossbreed holsters, but I will say I could not do it without her. Um, she has not worked for several years now. Prior to that, she was in the medical profession, spent 15, 18 years as what's called a surge tech, a surgical technician, and that's somewhat of a technical job. And uh, obviously, you know, crossbreed grew, and, and, and I had been asking her for years to quit, and she finally did, and, but... Since that time, I have gained a tremendous amount of respect for stay-at-home moms because that's what she became. And she's probably busier now taking care of me, helping me keep my schedule going. I mean, all the stuff she does that I don't think about every day and I forget to thank her for, I couldn't, I couldn't do my job without her behind me, to be honest. So, yeah, she's, she's integral, maybe not directly in the company business, but, uh, yeah, she's very integral to Mark Craighead getting his stuff done. Crossbreed is to me about a lot more than just the company, than just the holsters, than just, you know, giving people, pff, I'm just going to be blunt, the best concealed carry holster on the market. There's knockoffs, but they ain't got it right yet, and, and they won't. But there is definitely a very divine angle on crossbreed holsters. Um, I don't beat people over the head with my religion, um, but I do have a very personal relationship with the Lord, and the financial blessing that has come into my life through Crossbreed has very much been redirected into a lot of other areas. So it's probably, that'll probably work for that. But yeah, it's, there's, yeah, it, I gotta give credit where credit's due and I didn't do it by myself. Obviously, as, as Crossbreed has grown, our advertising revenue has grown and, and that's one thing as a business owner I try to do is keep us out there, if you will. And having worked with Troy before, I knew he could put together a good show. And then frankly, I became aware of some of the other individuals involved, and I can honestly say, of the shows I've worked on, this show honestly has the most, what I would call tier one or tier two, firearms industry professionals involved of anything I've done. And I've worked with some tier one folks before and some tier two folks, but never this many in one show. Um, I would be surprised if Trigger Time does not go many seasons. That's honestly my goal for it, is, is to run for many, many seasons. About Mark Craighead, what I want people to take away from is a little bit of reverence, a little bit of humility, recognizing that I didn't get here by myself, um, whether that's folks that work with me, our customers, the good Lord, or whatever. I didn't do it all. I'm just a regular guy that made some good calls, that has some skills that he's applied, and has had some help along the way. 
thing I would want to be remembered for was touching other people's lives in a positive way and making a difference because that, no matter where you're at in life, is really more important than business success, finances, any of it. I don't care what your financial level is. When you learn to bless other people, you truly get blessed yourself. That, and that, that's more important than any of it.